Wow, what a hockey game. Oh boy, immediate reaction right here, but the New York Rangers fall to the Tampa Bay Lightning in Tampa, bringing their series lead from 2-0 over to 2-1. The Lightning claw back and force a comeback victory on home ice in what was one of the best defensive battles we have seen this entire postseason. I don't know if it's because of the circumstance, hey, it's the third round, it's the most important games we've had so far, or if it's the goalies themselves that make this fun, but holy crap, was that an entertaining hockey game? Whether you were cheering for the Lightning, like I'm sure many Lightning fans have been, or you're cheering for the Rangers, like I'm sure many fans of other NHL teams have been as well, unless you're from Montreal, that in which you don't like Chris Kreider. I myself was on the New York bandwagon because I don't want Tampa to three-peat. Even though in my bracket I had Tampa going to the finals, I still would not like them to because... Hey, let somebody else win the championship for a change. But for New York, this was a game where they had a chance to absolutely take a stranglehold. Up 2-0 heading into Game 3. And ultimately, they blow a 2-0 lead. It's 2-0 at the halfway mark of the game. Tampa Bay comes back to win 3-2 with the last goal coming in the last 20 seconds of the game. And yeah, as we said, 3-2, that's the final score over here. Tampa really showing off that they are the back-to-back -back reigning champions for a reason. They had gone 17 straight games after losses with wins. That streak was broken in Game 2 in Madison Square Garden. They were not going to go out there and make it three straight losses. Now, this game was... Such a good defensively locked down game for both sides, and it wasn't really until the second period halfway through where we started to see one team run away with it, and then in the third, the other team just completely rebounded and took pure control over the rest of the contest. The first period, we saw some dueling chances over here, back and forth, traded by Ryan Reeves and Brandon Hagel, both getting good wrist shots back to back off of each other. We had Ryan Strom who ended up leaving the game because of a very awkward. It looked like a knee bend when he ended up taking a body check. It wasn't really the most clear visual out there, but he did indeed leave the game, so that's a big loss for the New York Rangers. However, that didn't stop the Rangers from getting on the board to strike early in this one, and they did it twice. Now, before we get over onto that, I wanted to talk about just the officiating in general, because this game, I mean, you saw all the referees getting involved here. There were four-minute double minors. There was blood being drawn. There were a lot of calls made out there to protect goaltenders, which I do appreciate. However, some of the calls weren't great. There were some on Truba. There were some on a few other players that were kind of off. But, like, at the end of the day... Truba aside, you could debate the legitimacy of the calls that were thrown against him, but still, the guy didn't have a great game in the slightest, and I think anybody who watched this would go out there and agree with me on that point. The Rangers didn't lose this game because of the refereeing. I want to make that clear right here. Sure, the referees had a hand in dictating the momentum swings and a lot of the opportunities, but... New York kind of shot themselves in the foot in this one, especially in the third period, so let's just go over what happened. The Rangers, on the power play, get themselves a few one-timers done by Mika Zibanejad. The first goal at the eight-minute mark of the second period is Adam Fox throwing it across for Zibanejad. He one-times it. It goes right through Andre Vasilevsky, who had a stellar night tonight, by the way, and then the next few minutes here, the Rangers get themselves another power play, wherein it's the exact same play. Fox goes over to Zibanejad, he one-times it, there's a rebound right there in front, and it's Chris Crydizzle who gets himself on the board, giving the Rangers the 2-0 lead. Now, at this point, the game really does feel like it's going to be New York's to lose here because they had themselves so many just prime opportunities on that man advantage. I get it. It's all in the power play, and they got two goals, so good for them. But my gosh, just the dominance, the possession, the keeps at the blue line. This Rangers team had the lightning on their heels, and then the Rangers take a penalty. It's Jacob Truba interference on Andre Palat. The Tampa Bay power play goes to work. It hasn't been great as of late. They said 10% in the last X Games or whatever it was. Eventually, it's Hedman who goes over to Kucherov. He's so far on the side there. He is so not in a prime scoring position, but he one times it flat along the ice. It goes right through the wickets of Igor Shashurkin. Just a, oh man, I don't want to say it's a bad goal for Igor to give up, but it was a one-time slap shot from the point to the left side, and it was along the ice. So Igor, as he was moving over to his left to get the post, it slid right by. Just the technique, though, on Kucherov to one time that flat instead of getting any elevation on that puck magnificent, an absolute magician out there on the ice, and he scores to bring the Lightning within one. 
There are a few more chances traded off here between both of these teams. You have a shot by Philip Cheadle that is deflected out in front of the net. There's another opportunity by Brandon Hagel that looks pretty good as well. But going into the third period, the Tampa Bay Lightning just really started to turn it on, and we saw what made them the two-time reigning back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions in this third. Kicking things off at Steven Stamkos from a long Corey Perry pass on the right half boards all the way to the left point. Stamkos one times it, it gets right by Igor, who had a fantastic game by the way, and from there, the Tampa Bay Lightning just really got their mojo on. Sure, there were power plays both ways. There were opportunities on special teams for both of these teams. But the Rangers going out there with Frank Vetrano getting the goalie interference penalty. Jacob Truba holding against Anthony Shirelli. Zen Truba as well at the end tripping Alex Kalorn. This was not a good game for Jacob Truba. This was not a good game when it comes to the Rangers helping their goalie. Because even though Igor was great... The guy faced like 50 shots, and a lot of them came in the third period here. You take a look at the opportunities, just the zone time, the possession. It was all Tampa, and Igor had to step up big. Igor was also getting hounded and swarmed by the Tampa Bay guys, almost as if they knew that this is the one guy to beat. They've got the Rangers on their toes. They just got to beat the goalie, and then they're going to be good. And eventually, that's what happens at the end, where it's... Andre Palat off of a very beautiful feed by Nikita Kucherov. Kucherov receives a pass from Hedman right in the middle. It's a fast pass. Igor Shashurkin tracks the puck. He stops in the middle because Kucherov's right there. And then Kucherov, no look, backhands it over to Palat, who's on the side there. Palat just wrists it on goalie, gets it off quickly, and Igor can't get there in time. It's 3-2 with 20-something seconds left in the third. The Lightning win the game just a few moments later. Andre Vasilevsky and Igor both had fantastic games over here. It's just the goals that beat them, you could debate none of these goals were really their fault. I mean, cross-crease one-timers, is that really the goalie's fault? Rebounds out in front, is that really the goalie's fault? I mean, the DDD one-timer works pretty well in NHL 21 and 22, so I don't really think that Andre Vasilevsky was at a position of fault for not stopping the Zabanajad shot. And then for Igor, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, Kucherov over to the side one-timer, and then you have the, of course, the Steven Stamkos almost like a D-to-D, but not really because Corey Perry was on the half boards. This was a defensive goaltending battle that the Rangers just kind of let get away from them. And it's unfortunate to see for sure, but you can't be disappearing in the third period, man. You could say it's the referees and the momentum and all the momentum the Rangers had was taken away because of the penalties, but like... They were not the better team in that third, and the third is ultimately when the winners come out to play, and New York, they'd been winners for the past two games, it's just this one, we had seen why Tampa is the reigning back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champion. So, game four, we'll see who takes it. Is it a 3-1 to one series lead for New York, or do the Tampa Bay Lightning tie it and make things very interesting heading over into the next few days over here? Talk in the comments all your thoughts about the Rangers and the Lightning. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.